We have to move forward to the future we imagined in 2008, where everyone gets a fair shot, and everyone does their fair share, and everyone plays by the same rules. That's the choice in this election, and that's why I'm running for a second term as President of the United States. President Obama Saturday in Ohio officially kicking off his re-election bid. And it's time now for our Sunday group, Bill Crystal of the Weekly Standard, A.B. Stoddard from the Hill newspaper, former State Department official and Fox News contributor Liz Cheney, and Fox News political analyst Juan Williams. Well, President Obama made the same basic argument in his campaign launch bill that he's been making actually for some months now. He wants everyone to get a fair shot while he says Romney and the Republicans want bigger tax cuts for the wealthy, bigger spending cuts for the poor and the middle class. Is that a winning argument? I don't know. There wasn't a whole lot about his actual record in his speech that I saw. There wasn't, I didn't, I missed the long defense of Obamacare, his, his signature achievement, his legislative achievement, his long defense of the stimulus. Um, so I think he, he would like to frame this as Romney is going back to the Bush years and a rubber stamp for this horrible Republican Congress and he is still running as Mr. Hope and Change and all that stuff he's actually done for the last three and a half years, don't worry about that too much. You know, I have to say, <laughs> despite the cynicism of that remark. No, that was, a, that it, was just a factual no, remark. No, it, it was. I was really struck, A.B., by how little the president talked about what he has done in his three and a half years here in Washington and how much he wants to frame this as a choice between he's going to stand up for the middle class and the poor and Romney's going to stand up and protect the rich. Well, that's why Romney continues to use those same words. He always says, because the president cannot run on his record, you will hear a lot of distortion and distraction. And Senator Rubio picked up on that theme also but were you this surprised morning. surprised how little Obama no, talked I'm not, about the because Obama? We have heard him, this is, for months we've known he's not going to talk about Obamacare. He's not going to defend the stimulus program. For now, he has an economy that he can't talk up, whereas a few months ago it looked like we were on the road to a strong enough recovery, and that is now dimmed. So he really is finding it difficult to, to, to touch on a theme that will win swing voters and, and knock off Mitt Romney in the fall. The, the divisive theme of, you know, we can't go back to those hideous Republican economic policies is the one he's embraced, and he's going to stick with it by saying, I'm the champion of the middle class, and they only want to cut taxes for the rich and will take us back to, you know, the brink of a depression again. I, I, what I wonder is, in several months, if he doesn't have to, because he's being so aggressive, sort of take a more presidential tone. I know he's trying to rev up the students before they leave campus for the summer, but it's uh, it's very brazenly political at this point. I wonder about his tone as, uh, as the weeks and months continue to pass and he sees what it does to the polling. Liz, I, I want to pick up on this because, I mean, and you know, I'm sure most people did not watch the president's speech live, but his basic argument was the same basic argument that he made in 2010, which is, you give control back to Romney and the Republicans, and they're going to take us back to the mess that we've been trying to dig out of for the last three and a half years. You can argue whether it's a good message or a bad message, but the fact is they tried it in 2010, and they took what the president called a shellacking in the midterm elections. Why is it going to work any better this time? Well, I don't think that it will. I think he's desperate. I don't think that there's much else that he can run on. It's interesting, though. Each time I hear him speak, uh, you know, I'm reminded uh, about sort of the way that senators operate in the negative sense, which is they believe that if they stand up and say something, that's sort of the end of the responsibility. And whether it was this speech yesterday, whether it was a speech in Afghanistan, you always have this sense of, you know, saying it doesn't make it so. And he's, he is a very effective public speaker from the, you know, sort of technique standpoint. But when you're facing a situation where the record is so bad, where the recovery is so slow, where people are so unhappy, uh, you know, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to sort of say, yes, just trust me for three more, four more years here, even though my, my policies have been complete failures to date. Juan, are we being overly negative about the president's speech? It's been been a pretty tough panel here so yeah, far. Yeah, I think it's tremendously over. I mean, I, I, I'm sort of, you know, of a mind that when I look at the economy, I understand that most Americans think we're still in a recession. Well, we're not in a recession. The fact is we've been on a slow, clear recovery. That, that's what the trajectory shows. The second thing is to say that everybody who has investments on Wall Street knows that Wall Street's back to the point. Uh, in fact, it's hit 1,300 the other day, so it's beyond where we were. 13,000. 13,000, where we were when the, uh, when the, 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 
Great Recession started. If you look at the uh, rate of production of services and goods by this economy, it's again in excess of where we were when this recession started. But, but, it, but the president with fewer didn't talk people. about most of that stuff. But I'm just saying, you know, I think that what we're doing here is we're saying, listen, here's where the economy is. Here's what he has to run on. He has something to run on, and it's not. You can say, as Bill Crystal pointed out, he didn't talk about. Uh, Obamacare. He doesn't talk about the stimulus, never even mentions that word because it's so toxic. But the fact is that there are in, in indicators for the American people, for you, for me, anybody who has the kids coming out of college in, in the spring and looking for a job, to say, you know, there there is reason to think that we are on a right track. So I disagree with my colleagues here. All right, but let's, having said that, the economic news, and we just got the latest economic report for April, uh, uh, on Friday, and the news was not good, and let's put it up on the screen. Only 115,000 jobs created. The unemployment rate went down because 342,000 left the workforce, and the percentage of Americans in the workforce, those who either have jobs or are looking for jobs, is now 63.6%. That's the lowest in 30 years. Now, the president does note that the private sector has created more than 4 million jobs over the last 26 months. Can he sell that as a recovery? He can sell it as a very mediocre improvement from the situation he inherited. And I think at the end of the day, I've also tried to think about, well, what will he say in September, October, when we have the real, the real campaign, the real debates? He has got to make, if he can make this a choice between Obama's first term and Bush's second term, he would have a chance. Because one thing every American knows is the scariest moment in our adult lifetimes in terms of the economy was September 2008. And you know, President Obama, to be fair to President Obama, he wasn't president then. And that was under President Bush's watch. And we could always debate endlessly who was really responsible for the housing bubble and the securitization of mortgages and the financial crisis. But I do think that the more you think through what Obama's strategy is going to have to be, it's going to have to be to hang 2007-2008 on the Republican nominee's neck and say, recovery may not have been great, but it's better than what I inherited. That's got to be his own. So it's not going to be about his record. He's going to make Mitt Romney into the third term of George W. Bush. You, you think that's right, A.B.? You know, I think that Bill Re might be right. He might have to say, are you better off now than you were in November of 2008 when you elected me? Yes, you are. But he's running out of time, and we see that from the latest numbers. It's the, the, the estimates for growth have been downgraded. We're just not going to see the kind of growth in the next six months before people go to the polls that's going to boost um, hiring. And it's just not going, the picture's not going to change that much. So um, if this is not enough progress for Americans, they're going to vote him out. All right. Uh, before we get overly negative about uh, that, I mean, we do need to point out the fact is that he's either leading or tied in the polls. And a lot of people, I think the experts would say he's got a much easier path to 270 electoral votes than uh, Mitt Romney does at this point. Liz, I have one quick political question to ask you. Are you considering running for the Senate from Wyoming? Uh, I love Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming is my home. Uh, and what I have been hearing from people all across Wyoming is how important it is that we defeat Barack Obama in 2012. And they're very afraid about, you know, if you ask people in Wyoming, are you better off now than you were $5 trillion ago? Mm -hmm. They'll say absolutely not. Okay, but, and I, I, the reason I'm... <laughs>